Because I can memorize the whole Bible. I can know every promise and never have a prayer answered. Why? All right. Listen. Listen carefully. Listen. It's a verse you've heard, but maybe never connected it with what I'm saying. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. But watch this. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, God the Father, searching the hearts of man, knows the mind of the Holy Ghost who is in prayer, because he, the Holy Spirit, maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. In other words, if I pray according to His will, He doesn't hear me because it's in the flesh. But if the Holy Spirit uses my body, and if the Holy Spirit is praying through me, and if He, the Holy Spirit, has breathed Himself into His will and prays His will, it is that prayer that's answered, not the prayer I pray that is answered. I can pray, Lord, your word says, your word says, your word says, he ignores me. Lord, your word says, I can scream it, I can shout it, I can holler it, I can repeat that for a, for, for, for a hundred years. Nothing. But I am alone. And now the Holy Ghost breaks my heart and soul. Suddenly, the flesh cracks and falls off. Suddenly, all that I thought I knew, I know no more. Suddenly, it's no longer I that prays. Suddenly, every word is born by the Spirit. Remember, all prayer, all supplication, all perseverance in the Spirit. Suddenly, the Holy Ghost is in control. And the Holy Spirit does not pray according to what I desire Him to pray. Nor does He pray for the things I want God to do for me. Because these are selfish prayers. James 4 says selfish prayers will not be answered. God's Holy Spirit now is praying using my vessel to touch the throne of God with groanings that cannot be uttered. Those groanings are not words. Those groanings are not words that I am producing in the flesh. Those groanings are beyond words. But those groanings are deeper than words. And suddenly, it is the word of God that is in control of that prayer. Every time that happens, when those groanings that cannot be uttered are a reality, the word of God becomes preeminent. The word of God becomes all in all. Suddenly it is the word of God that's being prayed. You'll hear yourself say things you've never said before. You wonder how you got that wisdom. That kind of prayer brings the word out of its treasure house. And God is faced with it. It is that, my brother, that happened to Moses. You wouldn't dare look at God and say, repent. Unless the Holy Ghost is speaking through you. The man didn't say it. 
The man did not say, what would the Egyptian say? The man could not speak such words. You are God who said to Abraham. You can't say it. That prayer was prayed in the book of Acts. Where Peter the apostle prayed in the spirit and said, By the mouth of the prophet you've said. The word of God became so alive, it literally shook heaven. And shook the upper room for the second time. It is that kind of prayer that shook the jail when Paul the Apostle was chained. It's that kind of prayer that shook the cave that John was in on Patmos. Are you listening? We're not talking about flesh. We're talking about the Holy Ghost who takes over that vessel of clay and turns it into an instrument of prayer. May the Lord bring you there in Jesus' name. God is not looking for beggars. He's looking for partners. Prayer is not, gimme, 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 gimme. Prayer is, I'm standing by your side, Lord. It is that kind of prayer that gives God a partner. You know the word says nothing is impossible with God. It doesn't say nothing is impossible to God. God is looking for a man or a woman to stand side by side with Him. When you are in the Spirit, now you are no longer asking, you are cooperating. You will say things to the Lord about Himself to exalt Him, to honor Him, to glorify Him. How? By telling Him who He is. That's what happened. Moses said, God, you are the God of Abraham. You said to Abraham, read what David wrote. Lord, and he begins to tell God who he is. He said, well now, doesn't God know? You don't understand. That's the way you glorify him. You glorify him as you become his co-worker, his partner. You are strengthening him. He said, what did you say? I know this is news to you. God is looking for men and women who stand by him with his plans for humanity. Could you not tell it with me for an hour? He's still saying it. For the word of God is established forever. God is looking for a man who will stand in the gap. Do you understand that? Because that man becomes his partner. That's what prayer is all about. Now people of God, I don't know whether you are as far as you ought to be in prayer. Now just a second, Cheryl. I don't know whether you're as far as you ought to be because most people, sadly, are still on that level that says, Give me, bless me, my children, my mind, my body. That's the basement. Get out of the basement. Because when you're up on the mountain, all your shackles are broken. And all your needs are met. He'll meet your need before you can say anything. Are you ready for that? Yes. Are you ready for that? Yes. Then lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm going there. Lord, now, very quickly, we cast ourselves upon the Holy Spirit. Who will direct us, lead us. Even guiding our expressions.